ever wonder why you can't go faster than the speed of light and why time slows down when you try? It's a fact of the universe that this is a thing that happens. However, when someone tries to explain the mechanics of it, you start hearing about light clocks and spaceships and rulers that squish. And that's all well and good about explaining what happens when you go at the speed of light, but not why it happens. To get a good idea of why the universe treats light speed and time so strangely, we kind of have to learn how dimensions work. Don't worry, there's no math, and I'll start out simple. We'll first start with a zero-dimensional universe. It's just a dot, and it sort of just sits there. It's really quite boring. Nothing moves because there's nowhere to go. It just exists. It just is. Even though that's great in a philosophical sense, it's not exactly a universe that can get things done. Now we will introduce the concept of orthogonality. Orthogonal is just a fancy word that means perpendicular, 90 degrees to. When you want to add a dimension, you just put it perpendicular to the last. Starting with our zero-dimensional universe, any direction would really be orthogonal to it. We'll just pick one and extrude the universe in that direction. Now we have a line, and it goes infinitely in each direction. This is a one-dimensional universe. You can think of this universe like a train track. You can go forward and backward, but if the line ahead is blocked, you can't go around. Here we're going to define a new concept called a vector. All it means is a thing with direction and magnitude. In this universe, the directions are only this way and that way, and the magnitude is speed. If the magnitude is zero, then we're not really moving at all. So let's make a more interesting universe. We'll create another dimension orthogonal to the first. This will give us a two-dimensional plane. We can liken this to a car in a parking lot. Now we can go forward and backward and left and right. This universe has vectors that can go in 360 degrees. Once again, if the magnitude of the vector is zero, then we're not moving. Let's make a new dimension orthogonal to this. Now we have three dimensions. In this universe, we can put in a drone and it can go up and down and left and right and forward and backward. We can vector anywhere in this space. If we try and create another dimension, we have a problem. We seem to have run out of places to orthogonally extend into. Now you have probably been told that time is our fourth dimension, and this is true, and it's orthogonal to the other three. But where's the perpendicular line? At what axis does time stick out? To find where the axis of time is, we have to understand a few rules about the universe. We can look at two major rules that, if broken, our universe would simply fall apart. First, the universe doesn't care where you are, but secondly, the universe does care if you're there before you get there. That relates to a few rules about time. First, time flies like an arrow in the direction of entropy. Two, you can't have something happen before it's happened. Three, you can't have something happen after it happened. And four, everything can't happen all at once. Now that we know about dimensions and some basic rules about time and space, let's talk about the speed of light. The speed of light isn't some arbitrary speed that photons decided to go. It's the speed of things happening. It's the limit imposed by the universe itself to make sure that everything doesn't happen all at once. It's just an interesting quirk that we can watch it propagate. But here's the trick about the speed of light. We are all going the speed of light, even when we're sitting down at our desk watching something on a computer screen. As we sit, all of our direction is going through time. However, when we start to move in our universe, we start redirecting some of that time into space. Not a lot, and it's mostly imperceptible at earthly speeds, but it happens. As we put more of our direction into speed in the form of acceleration, we start to take away the amount available to time. Like our car analogy, if we start to go north, it'll take longer to go east. If we start to accelerate to almost the speed of light, we have so much direction going into space that we have almost none of it going into time. This is like a car going directly north. While it's doing that, we're no longer going east. At this point, we can't go faster in space, much as the same way that a car can't go norther in direction. And here, at this corner, is that orthogonal 90 degree angle between time and space. We just had to reduce space to a one dimensional line in order to see it. You'll probably see one of these brained up videos pop up on my channel every once in a while. They're kind of a side thing I'll do when I'm working on other content here. I'm still trying to feel out my channel, so feel free to tell me what you think in the comments down below. And thanks for watching! Thank you.